everyone, Dr. Chris here, and in today's video, I am once again going to be talking about GIS and geoscience. I am still at the very beginning, and today's video is about folder structure for both your projects and what's called your library. Here we go. All right, here I am back in my home office, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about folder structure for your GIS geoscience projects. It is very important to have a very solid base of organization for your projects. That's because I like having my projects look exactly the same across every single project that I do. This helps both in coding and in how you understand your projects and how you can communicate your projects to both people within your organization and without your organization. Can I say without your organization? Outside of your organization. Before we get going, make sure you check out geographicinformationsuccess.com to sign up to my newsletter. Also check out my book, Permissionless GIS, Double Your GIS Job Interviews Now, and check out my Spring Store, not Teespring Store, to get some GIS and Geoscience merch. Let's get into the video now. This video is on folder structure in your GIS and Geoscience projects. Now, there's also going to be a little bit about naming. That's because you have they sort of go hand in hand naming things specifically in specifically defined folders. Now, I'm sure there are plenty of books out there to talk about folder structure. However, I'll have to say this, I have read none of them. Everything I'm going to talk to you today about folder structure and naming I developed over a number of years for my GIS and geoscience projects. The structures I'm going to be talking about are fairly solid guidelines. You see, some of the structures are going to change over the years because of new programs developing new databases, or depending on the software you use, could have a different sort of data structure underlying that you need to follow. What's more important is the concepts and the understanding that I'm going to give you in regards to folder and naming structure within your GIS and geoscience project. Essentially, I have two main folders for GIS. That is a library and a project. The library, yeah, it contains statistic data, large data sets, rasters, Python tools, templates, symbology, and data from specific countries, specific states, specific cities. I'll talk about that in a bit. And of course, a project folder. And surprise, surprise, that's where your projects are. Just the basics are these two folders right here. We'll start off by looking at the library folder. As I show here, the library folder has a code folder, a template folder, a library geodatabase, a library toolbox, which is where the, ge where the geoprocessing tools you're going to make go. I've also included state name and country name. Now you could have multiple folders depending on how many places you actually work at with respect to your GIS geoscience projects. I'm going to go through each one of these folders and the geodatabase just so you can get a feel of what you have to do for your GIS geoscience projects. Your code folder will have three subfolders, that being expressions, Python, and models. The expressions are those little snippets of code that you use to do, say, table math or short selection criteria. These expressions are, you know, anywhere between 5 and 30 lines of code each. Your Python folder, on the other hand, holds your longer code. This is the code that you've linked back to your tools within your toolbox that can be upwards from 100 to 1,000 lines of code. The model folder, well, that's obvious if you make models instead of coding. Now, within these folders, I'll have to talk a little bit about naming. This goes back to another video that I've created. Say, for instance, when you create expressions, they should be very specific in what those expressions are, are doing within the code itself. For instance, the top ones here, I've got adds x, x to every y, y object. The expressions seem to be named very specifically, so you can come back into your folder and use those expressions over and over again within your GIS program. Your Python code, which is a lot longer than your expression code, they should have the names that say what happens at the end of running them. For instance, in this naming I've got here for the Python code, feature create, creates a feature. Feature export, it exports a feature. Feature import, it imports a feature. Geodatabase create, guess what? It creates a geodatabase. The naming of your code should be very specific so that you can instantly understand what's happening just by the name of the file itself. Next folder I'm going to talk about is templates. In this case, there are four subfolders within templates, that being docs, layouts, maps, and symbology. For me, I have subfolders within the docs folders for, you guessed it, 
Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. The next subfolder is Layouts. That's because when you're doing GIS Geoscience projects, you're going to want all your layouts to be similar across every single project. Again, why? That's so you can communicate within your, pro your, within your organization and outside your organization easier. This goes for the same with your Maps folder. That's where you keep your map templates. Again, your maps are going to look almost exactly the same other than the underlining data across all your geo, GIS and geoscience projects. This goes for the same with your symbology folder. You want to save all your symbology in there so you can access it across multiple projects. Next is the library geo database. Now what I keep in my library geo database are blank features. They're blank so I can automatically use code to pull those features out of the library and put them into my project's geodatabase. Now the great thing is within the geodatabase and on those blank features, you can include domains and subtypes and copying them from the library geodatabase into the project's geodatabase also copies those domains and those subtypes. You now have a central location that keeps all of your template features for all of your projects across your organization. On your screen, you can see the example from my library. That would be access digitized, power lines digitized, survey lines, and survey points. Each of these will have domains and subtypes associated with them. And when I start a new project, I immediately import those features into my current project. This way, you keep features consistent across projects across your organization. Next folder we're going to look at is state name. This is where you store all of your open data or data that you've paid for with respect to, in this case, state name, but this could also be city name, province name, region name. The subfolders within this folder are incoming. Next is the outgoing, where if you want to send the data out of your GIS. If you remember from my last video, I've got state name rasters folder and a state name rasters geodatabase. That's because Different software may not access the geo database, so you have to have those rasters within the folder system. I have a state name geo database. I like storing all of my features in the proper projection inside the geo database. Key here is that you've got these folders within your library where you keep specific data for specific areas. You never want to have 16 Australia folders. You never want to have 22 London folders. You want to make sure all your library data is centralized. That was an overview of your library folder structure for your GIS and geoscience project. Now we're going to look at the project folders because you want all your projects to look the same. So they essentially look like this. The subfolders within your project folder will just simply be project name. Within each project, you're going to have an incoming for all your data that's incoming, an outgoing for all the data that's outgoing, a project name raster folder and a project name raster geodatabase. And again, that's because a lot of the time some geoscience programs can't access the geodatabase. So you just copy your rasters from your geodatabase into this raster folder. You have your project name geodatabase where you've now got your smaller compact project GIS data and your scratch GI database where you're going to put all your derived and calculated features. All your projects will look like this other than the project name change. And again, why is that? That's so that you can communicate within your project and outside of your project very easily because all your projects are gonna look exactly the same other than their underlying data. You don't have to copy what I do precisely, of course. I just want you to start thinking about how to make sure that your folder system and your library system work together and are repeatable and easily accessed over time. Before I go, make sure you sign up to my newsletter at geographicinformationsuccess.com. Check out my book, Permissionless GIS, Double Your GIS Job Interviews. Now, also check out my Spring Store for GIS and Geoscience merch. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, add me to your LinkedIn, or even better, share my videos through your networks. Till next time, I'm Dr. Chris. Keep rocking.